G'day, and welcome to the Land Down Under. Hi, I'm Tommy Kendall, and welcome to the first ever test drive filmed in the Land of Oz. The Australian outback is a wilderness unlike any other. It's desolate, otherworldly, and filled with some of the most remarkable natural wonders on the planet. Behind me is Mount Connor, which rises out of the parched dry plains of the Northern Territory like a sleeping giant. It's a fitting place to open the show because the vehicle we're about to look at is a bit of a giant itself in the world of SUVs. It's the Toyota Land Cruiser. We've gotten our hands on the 2008 model, and I don't like to brag, but it's going to be an amazing test drive. We're going to go behind the scenes with National Geographic photographer Randy Olson in the Australian Outback, and then go halfway around the world to meet up with Baja 1000 winner, Ironman Ivan Stewart in the Canadian wilderness. All that, just to see if the Land Cruiser still has the grit to take on the elements, or if this SUV, like so many others, has become just another soft spring grocery getter. So, as the locals like to say, don't be a pika. Stick around, because this test drive is gonna be a ripper of a show. Welcome back, and welcome to Australia. Our journey has taken us from Los Angeles to the heart of the outback. Located in the very center of the country is Alice Springs a three-hour drive north of our final destination, Kings Creek Station. Some places are so rugged, so severe, and so fierce that they simply command your respect. And quite often, so do the people who choose to live there. Our next guest, Ian Conway, is one such individual. One half Aboriginal, 100% Australian, he's the owner of Kings Creek Station an amazing 800,000 acre ranch that's smack dab in the middle of Australia. And right now, Ian's about to take us on a guided tour of his working cattle and camel ranch. That's right, camel ranch. I've been in this region, which is southwest of Alice Springs. It's just north of Ayers, Ayers Rock or Uluru, as, as the Aboriginals call it, most of my life, about 45 years in this, this area. So I would probably know, particularly my, my part of the country, more than, uh, better than anyone else, and I would even say better than any other full-blood Aboriginal. The temperature gets up to about 130 odd degrees here in the summer, which is comparable to Death Valley in the States. And uh, you know, a lot of people say what what keeps you on a, in a place like this. It's many things, but even though it's isolated, you you don't feel isolated. It, it just brings the gladness out in you as soon as you sort of get away from any sort of civilization. The main thing when you travel in this country is to be fully confident in, in your vehicles. You can't afford to be broken down here in the middle of the summer for instance and when we first started out here we had very little in the way of machinery and the only vehicle we had on the place was a 1975 short wheelbase Toyota Land Cruiser. And, uh, with that little Land Cruiser, we, we opened a lot of this country up. We, we made the first roads with it. In fact, we actually started our airstrip by pulling stumps with a uh, Toyota. It's been the most reliable vehicle that anyone could wish to ever have. And, uh, you know, I think uh, my kids will actually bury me with it, you know, because uh, Shorty's my vehicle. Australia is the only continent or, or, or country in the world where we have wild camels and it all started back in, in 1840 and since then the camel herd has risen to what they tell us today about a million wild camels in Australia and they say that the population will double in about eight years. So I thought well I might as well start catching camels so I sold camels to everybody and I, that was how we made our first source of revenue out of Kings Creek Station was selling wild camels to people all around the world and all around Australia and uh, today we've just gone out to catch a couple of camels to bring back home for our breeding herd that we've already got on the property so we'll we'll do that today we hope. We should run on to quite a few camels today and there'll be quite a bit of action. We move fairly quickly and that's the whole idea of it is to move quickly you've got to be very quick on the mark to get going but with helicopters it makes it a little bit easier so uh, we'll just see how we go. Yeah, can you read me out back, John? Yeah, I got you. Yeah, mate, um, I noticed you had cracked lips, so we'll be able to remedy that a bit later on. Yeah, I think I'll be quite all right, thanks, mate. 
No, we'll get you to kiss a camel on the ass. You won't lick your lips anymore. That's a good anti-dad for it, isn't it? He's got a big mob now coming into shifting sand, so we're, we're pretty, oh, it's only 10 to 8. Jeez, it's going to be a good day. Today, Ian is hoping to call two young males from the wild herd. He uses them at his ranch for breeding purposes, but these two wild bulls will also offer Ian valuable information about the health of the local camel population. After a lot of patient, hard work, and a bit of luck, Ian and his crew have mustered a large, healthy young bull. Normally, in the wild, his prospects would be uncertain at best. But at Ian's ranch, he'll have plenty of food and shelter. Not to mention romance. Hey, very tame now. <laughs> very tame. I'll be able to ride him to Alice Springs shortly. All right now? We'll have to give him a name though, won't we? I reckon Chucky. There you go, Chucky. There we go. There we go. Up next, we go one-on-one -on -one with National Geographic photographer Randy Olson in the Australian Outback, when Test Drive continues. Welcome back, and welcome to Australia. Our journey has taken us from Los Angeles to the heart of the Outback. Located in the very center of the country is Alice Springs, a three-hour drive north of our final destination, Kings Creek Station. Welcome back to the Australian Outback, Kings Creek to be exact in our test drive at the 2008 Toyota Land Cruiser. Our next guest is a renowned photojournalist. In 2003, he was voted Magazine Photographer of the Year. 1992, Newspaper Photographer of the Year, winner of a Robert F. Kennedy Award, amongst others. Randy Olson, welcome to Test Drive. Thank you very much. Now, take us through some of your most memorable assignments and some photographs you've taken. Well, I had to uh, strap a lot of money to my body and go fund an expedition in Siberia early on in uh, my career. I had photographed bird hunters in Pakistan. I photographed some of the worst uh, places in Africa, Sudan and the Congo. I've been with pygmies who have no possessions and are some of the happiest people in the world I've ever, ever met. It's, it's been a lot of uh, varied experiences. All I want to do is make photographs and and deal with some of the issues in our world that need to have some attention brought to them. Now this assignment has brought you to the Outback. Uh, we're gonna ride along with you, look over your shoulder, talk about how this car helps you do your job and uh, learn a little bit more about what you do. Yep, great. Let's go. Okay. I don't know even where to start. I mean, you've led such a fascinating life. You've been to so many amazing places. Talk about your relationship with these cars and your job. Well, they're just the most durable cars. Um, I've used them all over Africa. There was one trip in Sudan where I had to rent two Land Cruisers because we were going across the open desert. You need two cars because if one goes down, you just burn to a crisp like a banana peel thrown out on the <laughs> Sahara. So, so when people say they need a reliable car, that's when you really need you a really, reliable car. Really need. It. You know, we've had everything from the very first Land Cruiser that came to Australia out here for some of these big shoots. And I've switched over to trying to, you know, slip my way into this one every time we're out because they've done something with the suspension that makes this so much smoother. I mean, we've got the last gen of the 2007, the one that's currently available, and it is three times bouncier than this it's thing. It's a quantum leap forward. Here. It's the suspension in this thing is a huge improvement. How are you? How are you? 
so we can you know get some insights. What's on your mind when you're? I mean, it's different for every setting, but is it all? It's all composition, light, shadows. I mean, think out loud for us. Well, you know, what I'm looking at is just information. You know, I've got to incorporate various things into a photograph, and so there's the information layer, and there's just pure geometry, and then there are little moments. So in this scene. The car is one thing, because I'm photographing these cars. The animals are another, and then someone who's working with these animals is yet a third element. So you're always trying to figure out what geometry works where. I mean, ideally, you want all of this geometry to bring people in the photograph to a little bit of emotion. And so, you know, you have to actively position yourself. This geometry isn't gonna line up for you in you know, right in front of you. At, at another level, it's just serendipity. You know, how are all these things going to align themselves and are you going to be in the right place? Okay, see? Right there. And then kind of pull back and you've got this whole scene. Dust is uh, kind of the main thing we're doing on this. <laughs> okay. The dust lingers because there's not a lot of wind. So the, the light coming through the vegetation, the dust uh, flattens that whole area out. So, I mean, it's pretty contrasty light. All of that dust, the way it wraps around and then kind of goes that way, makes the whole middle of the picture great. You know, we're always in cars, working out of cars. Um, and often the first uh, impression of any country is, you know, the first time you get in a car and there's all this chaos and and often I'll try and photograph kind of the chaos of Africa out the windshield of a car with uh, cabbies hands in the air, you know, talking about how awful the traffic is and kids rolling tires across and, you know, just the kind of multi-levels of things that happen. A car is often yet another layer. You know, some of the most famous photographs in the world are photographed through some form of transportation. Stick around, because we're about to switch gears, swap continents, and change hemispheres as we travel all the way from the Australian outback to the Canadian Yukon, next. If you'd like to see more amazing behind the scene footage of this shoot in the Australian outback, go to speedtv.com slash landcruiser. Welcome back. Our expedition is now taking us north, way north. From the Australian outback, we travel to the other side of the world, to the Canadian Yukon. If you like your skies wide open, your wilderness unspoiled, and your winter temperatures about minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit, then this is the place for you. We're in Canada's Yukon Territory with the all-new 2008 Toyota Land Cruiser. For those of you not familiar, the Yukon Territory is one of the coldest, most rugged places on the continent. Our next guest is a guy who eats rugged terrain for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Legendary off-road racer, legendary off-road racer, three-time Baja 1000 winner. And if that's not enough for you, his nickname is the Iron Man. Ivan Stewart, welcome to Test Drive. Hey, Tommy, how are you doing? We're a long way from Baja, but it's still your kind of area. It's off-road, and it's absolutely gorgeous up here. It's definitely not Baja, but it sure looks like a lot of fun to off-road. Now, you made your name in Baja. Tell us about the name. Where did the name Iron Man come from? Well, that came years ago. A Valvoline Oil Company put up an award called the Valvoline Iron Man Award to anybody that could race the whole Baja 1000 solo, and you had to win. So I did it the first time. I was the second to win it, then the third, and it was Mickey Thompson. Journalists started calling me the Iron Man. You know, that's Ivan Iron Man Stewart. But great, great fun stories and great times, and, and a chance to come to places like Canada and, and go four-wheeling in the new Land Cruiser. I mean, how special can that be? Well, let's go for a drive. Which one do you want? I want that one. All right, let's do it. <laughs> All right, Tommy. Now, as we go along this lake, and it feels like our own lake, it might literally be because this territory is desolate. The Yukon Territory is 15% bigger than California, and in the whole territory, 33,000 people. There's a, a population in this area of, they say, something like 1,500 grizzly bears. 
that is more individuals than all but the biggest city, which is Whitehorse in the whole Yukon. That is incredible. I can tell you one thing, it's absolutely beautiful out here. This is what off-roading and four-wheeling is all about, Tom. You know, Tom, at 381 horsepower, uh, this Land Cruiser got plenty of that. But the 401 foot-pounds of torque this engine puts out is what we really care about in off-roading because we may have to get through some sand or silt or snow, and that's where you really want those bottom numbers, that torque numbers to come up, as you well know. This is cool. You feel you feel unstoppable in this thing. <laughs> you know, one thing, Tom, that uh, people should be aware of in yourself is that when you cross water like this, um, be aware that as soon as you get on the other side, your brakes might not be as effective as they were and probably won't be because now the rotors have got water on them. So That'll just give me an excuse to give you a little shot up the tailpipe. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, man. Wet brakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, that's, that's the horn in Baja, right? Parnelli Jones, I mean, I like I say, I, I loved his stories, and he, a journalist asked him one time, too, he said, well, Parnelli, you know, you passed 130 cars in the, the first uh, 100 miles. How did you possibly get past all those cars? And he said, well, he said, I used the honk and bump system. And he said, well, what do you mean by that? He said, well, I honk. If they don't get out of the way, I give them a bump. And he said, well, now how much time passes between the honk and the bump? He said, about an eighth of a second. <laughs> 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 That's it. It's the Iron Man I know. The, We're going to start calling you Yukon Jack. <laughs> and we get paid for this. Yeah, we do get paid for this. If you don't tell anybody, then I'd do this for nothing. <laughs> <laughs>
you've got a four zone climate control, four different temperatures in four different parts of the car. Another area that works hard is smart key technology. With the key in your pocket, it will light the car up at night as you approach it and activates the start button without ever taking your key out of your purse or your pocket. Want more creature comforts? How about an ice box available inside your armrest? For all intents and purposes, this car is nicer than my first apartment. Probably costs more too. Toyota likes to say that practically anywhere you might want to drive on this earth, there's a very good chance that a Land Cruiser has been there first. And it's true. For over 50 years, Land Cruisers have traveled to nearly every corner of the planet. And the lessons they've learned in that process have helped them create a truly iconic vehicle. As for the 2008 Land Cruiser, it's still the real deal. It's still a tough, reliable off-roader that can get you into and out of some of the most challenging terrains imaginable, whether it's the outback in Australia or the wilderness of the Yukon. But it's also a modern vehicle that's packed with incredible technology, cutting-edge safety features, and lavish creature comforts. For Land Cruiser, the future is still full of new challenges to conquer, because improving on a legend is maybe the biggest challenge of all. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tommy Kendall. See you next time.